Hi everyone, I'm Joey. Okay, so we're going to be making these uh, mudroom cabinets. Uh, now it's a little bit of a strange room. So we've got like a thoroughfare running through this way from the garage into the house. And where you are, and kind of behind you, is uh, a laundry. So it's kind of like a T-shaped room. And we needed to make really good use of the space in the thoroughfare. So uh, this is what we came up with. So I had been given measurements good enough for a initial drawing and price by my client. Uh, but after measuring the site myself, there was a few discrepancies. So I redrew my drawing, uh, but this time I'm only really drawing the details which I really need to construct the unit. So I, I delete all the uh, frivolous decoration, so to speak, uh, for this drawing. And this becomes my number one go-to plan um, I don't create 2D plans, I just measure everything straight off the model. And so I'm really able to nut out the details about how the pieces are going to break down and where my joint's going to be and can those pieces fit in my van for transport or what solutions do I need to come up with for that. And so this is where I make all those decisions before I get into cutting timber. So from those plans I ordered all the hardware I would need and that has come in nice and early so I'd check that that's all correct. The first thing to do is work on the solid oak kind of seat top and it's pretty long at just under three meters and uh, so it's kind of at the max of what my saw can straighten out but it works just perfect. So we ended up choosing MDF for this because the client wanted a very smooth flat finish and while I would prefer to use plywood, uh, I just was going to end up showing the grain too much with a sprayed finish so um, MDF was the choice. So the first thing to make is the small carcass for the drawers along the bottom and this is in two pieces because of the length. So this is just how I'm putting that together. So when you attach the back to a cabinet, I find it's best to glue and pin one side first, and then you can adjust the cabinet to be square with your back panel, assuming that is cut square as well. So to get the cabinet sitting where it has to go easily, we make the cabinet 18mm too short on each side and then add this what we call a scriber to the front and that can be trimmed to suit the wall if necessary. So the draw fronts will have a finger cut out as a draw pull and so I need to allow a bit more finger space into the carcass itself uh, just so your fingers don't knock on the, uh, the top. So the top cabinets are actually going to sit down into the oak seat by about 6mm. So first thing is to create a rebate right along the back edge for the cabinet backs to sit into. 
Then using a simple jig I can create another 6mm uh, pocket that is 36mm wide which will fit the sides of the cabinets. So the backs of the top units are 12 millimeters thick and we're creating a V'd effect like a tongue and groove uh, type effect and all I'm doing is uh, using my saw blade wound right down over on a 45 degree and I'm using a large ripping blade and that creates a really nice V groove and it's very quick to do it too. I had to make up some double thick shelves uh, for on the, the upper units so just a, some glue and some screws and then the screw holes can be bogged up afterwards. So the upper cabinets are, are actually very simple it's essentially just a big H with a backing on it uh, so there's not actually much holding them together until they're all touching each other uh, in place. I did have a sneaking suspicion that things were going a little too easily and it seems what I had done is made my cabinet to fit between the rebates on the oak top and not to go into them. So I was about 36mm uh, short. So ended up having to make uh, some new back panels and shelves. In the meantime, I'd cut my drawer fronts and was just cutting the handles out on the CNC. The next day, I got some more uh, 12 mm MDF and managed to make the back panels the right size so we were back up to speed. Now these units are having a sprayed finish and I didn't want to have any screw heads sticking around uh, holding them together so I'm using my Lamello Zeta P2 to join everything together uh, all with hidden fixings. So I thought I'd show that the end of the cabinet which meets the wall, you can see the lower scriber, then the oak top and the top scriber, all are the only parts that are touching the, the actual wall itself. So it makes it very easy to install, especially if the walls are out of square and 
all that fun stuff. I had to add a special wee groove on the top of the central doors and that is to line up with the scribers on the top of the unit and you'll see how that interacts a little bit later but it's uh, quite a uh, important detail I think and I could finally get on to uh, priming the hundreds of pieces and then a whole bunch of sanding. Uh, sanding the primer I'm using 320 grit. It seems to be a, a nice uh, grit that doesn't clog up too much and leaves a, a pretty nice smooth uh, finish. final coat of clears on the oak bench and I could get the draw runners in and assemble all the draw parts and slide them into place make uh, three coat hooks to go in the three bays so we just made up a very simple jig to cut an angled hole for the, the coat dowels uh, and then we just use a spray lacquer because getting clears evenly on those dowels is a bit of a pain in the butt so the lacquer was a, a nice way around that. With all the doors painted I could add the hinges and fit them into place this is a nice weed jig from uh, Bloom. It's not particularly cheap, but it is so quick and uh, very easy to use. Okay, right, we're in this space, 
So one of the main issues with this build was this uh, manhole into the ceiling space. Now we looked pretty seriously at shifting the manhole completely into another room, but because of the way the roof structure is formed, this really is the only place this can go in, the, in this area of the house. So it's just unfortunate the way the trusses are laid out makes things really difficult. So we are going to reduce how bad that looks slightly, I hope. And also the other thing we have to do is cut out the scotia up here. So I'm going to do that now. So this is just a plasterboard scotia and it's installed using plaster. So all I have to do is cut through the plaster and kind of pull out the pieces. It's not particularly hard work, it's just a bit noisy, a bit dusty. So the trim around the manhole was actually glued onto the, the plasterboard paper itself. So it really was not good coming off. It made some tear out through the into the plasterboard, so that needed cleaning up later as well. Now plastering is not my game at all, but I kind of understand the concept, I'm just uh, not very good at it. But I'm good enough that I can fix up a little bit of damage here. Next day I could come back and sand it and give the ceiling a coat of paint as well. And luckily this house was actually pretty square. I mean it is a new build but I had seen some parts of this house which were very much not square so I was expecting the worst actually. Um, but everything went in pretty easily so we had to attach these scribers first and then slide the unit across into position where it would drop down uh, into its little grooves. Now this was the tricky one. There was essentially no clearance uh, between the, the oak seat and the ceiling and so it was a pretty tight squeeze until it could get back and sit into its groove on the oak top. Uh, the plan from there was to actually wind all the feet up so the unit was hard against the ceiling but it turned out that we couldn't quite do that because there was some variance in the ceiling and it, it just was going to stop us. The good thing with the dark colour on the white is that any gaps that are there are actually almost invisible because of the shadow they create and uh, actually filling them looks much worse than just leaving them. So I made up some 3mm thick aluminium uh, plate and that is what's going to hold the manhole cover in place. And so we countersunk it, screwed that in place. Now I then filled those screw holes and repainted the trim. This allows the door to be only five millimeters away from the ceiling and still clear that trim. And you can see the groove in the door lines up with the scriber on each side of it. And so the shadow line it creates makes it look all very even when everything's uh, shut. Came back the next day to rehang the door leading into the garage so it doesn't open against the unit. Uh, so that was nice and easy. And then that was that was it pretty much done. It's very hard to get full pictures of the whole thing because of the space. But uh, there you go. I hope you guys enjoy this one. I'll see you next time.